It's a bountiful day in this hollow earth. A beautiful day for a hybrid. Do they shift shape? Boy, I feel great. Won't you be my cousin? Welcome everybody all around the globe to the most important meal of the day y'all y'all know what it is shrimp for breakfast <laughs> we fucking having a breakfast here together i hope you're having a great day i'm having a great day life is grand life is popping life is an amazing, adventurous ride. You know what I'm talking about. Let's go. And you know what the main ingredients are. We got a strong black cup of coffee, y'all. Oh, and let's not forget the best part, the garnish. We need that old shrimp, our shrimp, shrimp. You know what I'm saying? And we got the dank homegrown greens up in this pack three and let me remind you this is actual flour y'all we ain't puffing on none of that bullshit these are dank homegrown greens y'all straight out the ghost shrimp forest straight out the ghost shrimp national forest this is our first round of bushweed y'all hello we got another crop going Oh, yeah, let's go. Woo, I hope everybody's having an amazing day out there. Ask me anything, y'all. Put your questions in the comments. I know people got questions. Y'all haven't been asking them. Holler at your boy. Ask me anything you want, and I'll answer the juiciest questions in these next videos. That's how it works, y'all. Oh shit. We getting fired up. We getting fired up. We getting dip -a -dip -a -dip -a -dip -a -dip -a -dip up. The boy Squatch Matrix is up in the woods. He got here yesterday, drove like 19 hours through the night to get here with his family, which yes, as I'm thinking what you're thinking, it doesn't sound like the safest thing to do. But he is God's favorite Ghost Scout. So he does have that going for him. He's got the protection. He's got a fleet of angels. When he falls asleep, they take the wheel. You know what I'm saying? Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. <laughs> He's up there. It's 45 degrees right now. He's up there with the wife and the kids. It was 80 degrees the other day. Now it's starting to creep down a little bit. This is the 70s uh, today. But it's 45 right now. They're going to be a little bit chilly up there in those cabins. We gave them some extra blankets. But they're from Atlanta. So they don't know about that crispy late summer nip. Squatch does, of course. But he forgot. Because he's been to many a Ghost Scout training camp, y'all. He said this like his 12th time visiting here. He's definitely cumulatively spent many months in the Ghost Shrimp National Forest. One of the pioneering Ghost Scouts. One of the most accomplished Ghost Scouts here in the woods. And one of the best. The best of the best. The original camp champ. Our band, Squatch Matrix. God bless Squatch Matrix. Squatch Matrix. Oh. We might wake him up if we holler loud enough. You know what I mean? <laughs> Woo! Having a great week. Didn't hit the bid yesterday. But here we are this morning getting after red. They got here yesterday afternoon. Going to spend a couple nights in the cabins showing his kids what he did 
the great accomplishment, one of the greatest accomplishments of his life, helping construct the scout cabins, y'all. <sighs> He's deeply invested in that timeshare. Shout out to all the Ghost Scouts out there and all the workshop alumni as well, right? We got a vast network of creative artists all around the globe and it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. You can never have too many friends and you can never know too many artists. It's impossible. I love and cherish all my Ghost Scout homies and all my workshop alumni homies who I've seen recently and who I've not seen in a long time. Just with Ghost Fest, we obviously saw a lot of great workshop alumni. You know, the man Tokar's always up here, you know what I'm saying? Down thin thicket. He's up here doing his thing. Annabelle. Boop she was up here for a few weeks. They are really becoming regulars. There's different eras here. Me and Squatch were talking about this yesterday. You know, the older you get in life, and also the more projects you do, the more, you know, events, endeavors, you know, uh, uh, happenings, you realize that there's eras of things. Regardless of everybody's intention, there's just Mother Nature has her own plans. There are eras to what goes on. And we're like in, we're like in the third era of this forest. Um, so it's probably about every like five years, I would say there's kind of like a, you know, an era where this thing is going on. These people are here and then some of them fade out. Some of them stick around and then there's a new thing that's going on and new people coming in and a little bit of overlap and you know, you probably know that with some of your friends, right? You got the high school era, then you got the college era, then you got the going out and starting your career era and the people you meet there and then getting deeper in your career era if some of y'all are lucky enough to be in that era of your own life and of your own projects. And just remember, y'all, go Scouts. Hard to imagine my life without it now, without Go Scouts, without the workshop, without the alumni. And that was all just a crazy idea banging around in my head, right? It first struck me when I was hanging out on Mystery Mountain with my cousin Eben Akerson in New Hampshire shortly after getting out of Pratt, getting out of college, finishing Pratt. Starting my career hustling in New Hampshire, going around to the businesses, doing logos, doing shirts, doing my own comic projects, uh, you know, doing some, you know, gallery projects, um, you know, doing some album covers for sure for the homies and starting to go to, you know, going to shows and, 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 uh, carrying the, the binder in my backpack with illustrations printed out and, and shirts to give out and, and, and just try, doing everything I possibly could to hustle up illustration clients that I was hyped to work with, right? The coffee shops I like to hang at, the, the the music I like to listen to, right? That's the stuff where the power is, right? It's not just how can I go make money, it's where can my art, where can my passions overlap the drawings that I'm making to make them super powered, to make them super powerful, right? All the way back in the beginning, and then I started hanging out on Mystery Mountain, cutting snowboard trails, hanging out, doing cookouts. And it harkened back to my childhood of growing up in rural Western Mass, right? Where when I was 12, we had moved to suburban New Hampshire. And, and, and a bell was ringing. I was out of school. I knew I wanted to get back to New England, but this, I never liked suburban New Hampshire. And then I got this bell ringing, ding dong, ding dong. Throughout your life, there will always be, you're always listening for the little hints of life. You know what I'm saying? Turn off the notifications on your phone so you can hear the notifications of life, y'all. You hear that little ding dong out in the wilderness. 
outing the cosmic, timeless, infinite space of the universe. And it's a call to action for you, right? And you always got to be listening. They come sometimes when you least expect it, where you least expect it, right? And when I was there, I felt an incredible, strong, intuitional pull to hang out in the woods, to help out, right? For no thing other than fun, right? And play, right? Fun and play need to be at the core of your daily existence, right? Of your weekly existence. It's not just a weekend thing, right? You're not, you weren't put here to have a good time on the weekends. You were put here to figure out your purpose and continue to put together the ever evolving puzzle that is your life, that is your unique reality, right? And as I was there working on the trails, hanging out, eating some macaroni salad, eating some coleslaw, eating some steak tips, baby, baby, riding on a four wheeler. I was like, man, if I got my own forest and then brought in artists from all over and we're just having, you know, crazy fun together and playing together and creating together and, and, and building forts in the woods. Like when I was a kid, like, what if I had my own forest and I made like a dream summer camp where we just did all the funnest stuff we did when we were kids, but now we're adults, right? And, and I was getting into the, the chainsaw was really one of the huge symbols that brought me in, right? I grew up in the woods, but my parents are like bookie people they're 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 you know what i'm saying they're in they're i mean they like to you know we grew up when 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 i was a child we camped and hiked then when we moved we'd stop doing that for whatever reason but my parents weren't into hunting fishing forestry and when i saw my cousin up there with the chainsaw specifically you know, clearing trails and, and, and using the, you know, making firewood and then using timbers to build his cabin with. And, you know, this whole thing just struck this crazy chord with me. And I was like, if I did this as an artist and created my whole life from scratch, like an illustration, right? I saw it from the artistic lens. He, my, my cousin was a very straightforward, you know, industrial guy, right? Very industrious. The hardest working him, Charlie Pullout and Evan Akerson, two of the hardest working people I have ever met in my life. And I love to be around that. Very focused, know exactly what they want to do, know what they love to do and do what they have to do to get there, right? It was an amazing example. And Ed was sort of like an older brother my cousin was sort of like an older brother in the way that he showed me that side of the outdoors, right? That interact, that, 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 uh, of course, hiking and camping is interactive, but this is, this is almost getting more creative with the outdoors, right? Shaping it, right? The idea of having your own forest and shaping it, putting in, just putting in those snowboard trails was like, wow. And then they would snowboard and I messed around a little bit, but I've never done much skiing and snowboarding, strangely enough. My parents didn't take us growing up. But being out there in that way was a whole, activated it in a whole new thing. And, and, and counter logically, pro-intuitively, right? People always say counterintuitively, but I think they use it in the wrong way. Counter-logically, but pro-intuitively, because I'm here starting my career. Most of my friends are in the major cities and, you know, where I just left Brooklyn or, or, or another city where there's more opportunity, quote unquote. Uh, but they were all kind of, most of them were just working on ad agencies and jobs that I wasn't even interested in the first place. <sighs> but logically you think, you're going to have an art career, stay in New York City, of course, right? But I was drawn back, listening to my intuition, counter-logically, but pro-intuitionally, and then was pulled even deeper in, right? This is what I say. You got to listen to your intuition because it doesn't come in one big download. It comes in steps. And if you never take that one step, 
now you cut off the chain of events that are going to lead you further down that path. You're, you're kind of stuck. You're stagnant. You're in quicksand. You're in, you're in, you know, whatever that would be quick, <laughs> quick trade. It's a trap for sure. You're now standing. You're now stuck behind a pane of glass that is going to limit your forward growth. But by hearing that intuition to go back to New Hampshire, to have a low overhead, to have, a, to have my complete creative freedom so I could start my career on the right foot doing exactly what I wanted to do, doing weird stuff, doing stuff that was based on my personal mythology, my personal experience, my unique uh, view as an artist of this crazy reality, right? Consensus reality is very thin. It's a thin veil. It is reality 101. And once you start to dig into your, to, into your intuition and you start to leave the pack, you really understand that there's much more beyond that. That's the first step. And now that I was there back in New England, now I could be pulled deeper in. I was give, I created the opportunity for myself to be there making the trails, having fun, pulled me deeper in then I really got this vision of getting my own forest creating some kind of art community you know art events there not community in the sense of living communally you know but in the sense of holding events that are that are creating a a community of people that you know have the opportunity to stay involved and it was just a crazy dumb idea and when I would tell people about it <laughs> they would be like what I'm gonna do a camp where we're drawing and we're cutting down trees and we're driving ATVs and we're doing this and we're doing that you know this crazy vision of this mashup of all the stuff that I love that didn't necessarily have a paradigm together and, and and whenever you kind of start to talk to somebody about something they don't have a place for in their mind, it's like, they're like, oh, okay. Or they're like, that doesn't make sense. Or whatever. But they, they can't really, very few people actually go like, oh, all right, well, that sounds interesting. What, talk to me more about that. You know, they're just like, oh, I don't know. That doesn't sound like it'll work. And as I'm hanging there and I'm really building up this dream and, and, and balancing it off my cousin's. You know, my cousin's like, well, yo, build a, build a cabin up here. And when you, you know, get your land and, and you move away, just give me this cabin. You know, or I'll build a cabin on your land. So when I'm, I'm living there and, and, you know, eventually when I did move on, you know, just, just gifted him the cabin. You know, nice little, nice little gift for the endeavor for living there for a couple of years. And this was built all out of recycled materials, um, you know, that were gathered around, you know, some leftover lumber from a, a, my girlfriend's family at the time. And, uh, you know, I scavenged windows or whatever, you know, Craigslist stuff. I got the dogs on Craigslist at this time, right? Really starting to build up this weird, when you think of starting your career, you know, moving into alone living alone on a mountain my cousin wasn't living up there yet living alone on a mountain getting these two dogs living in a tent i started <laughs> i moved up there in a tent when i first really started to live up there allegedly um it was in a tent in the winter it was like december and i would just work all day on this cabin with these recycled materials we were gathering up got this atv driving materials up banging it together and it was so cold the dog one of my i just had the first dog he would go down in my sleeping bag i would be in two winter sleeping bags and my dog would be in the bottom of the sleeping bag to to keep warm and there was snow outside. I'd wake up every morning and get a little fire going in the in the fire pit and cook up some eggs and cook up some coffee in the in the in the percolator pot. And 
it was so challenging. I could remember being like, what am I doing? Like, what does this have to do with my art career? But when I asked that question, the answer was, if you can create your life like an illustration out here, like your forefathers did, right? My ancestors came over on the Mayflower, right? That's part of my heritage. English-Irish ancestry. And, you know, always been really obsessed with thinking about what they went through and just, you know, been completely obsessed my whole life with the indigenous people that preceded us here. And, and the lifestyles they lived always absolutely, you know, maybe all kids that grow up around here or in the woods do romanticize it, but like just absolutely, you know, if I could go be in any culture at any time, just, you know, living in indigenous culture, you know, as a native person here in New England, you know, where my family's been for the last 400 years would just be absolutely incredible. You know, obviously that's <laughs> crazy, like problematic and ironic and devastating and whatever, because, you know, the, you know, obviously the, not just, you know, the Mayflower, but all the ships that fucking came to this, uh, you know, came to this place, uh, kind of erased the, the previous people that were here, unfortunately, in, in a lot of ways, you know, not everywhere, you know, obviously. The, 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 the crazy history, the crazy way evolution works, right? The crazy way Mother Nature works. Mother Nature always has her own plans. And even though we look at ourselves very separate from that, <laughs> we're not, right? Humans have this idea that we've broken free from like the, the rules of nature and we're in this unnatural path. And, you know, it's up to us to make or break the universe, save or destroy this planet. I personally believe that's a very false premise. I believe we are designed to do exactly what we are doing and we're very good at it, whether you like it or not. And I feel like this is what, you know, every, everything as we started talking about is an era, right? And everything comes to an end and mother nature and mother nature's plan, it's usually viciously consumed by something else, right? If you live in the woods, you see it every day. You see it in insect culture. You see it in animal culture. You see it in plant culture. Everything, you know, gets eaten alive, mostly. Plants get eaten alive. Animals get eaten alive. <laughs> Almost everything. Rocks get eaten alive by fungus, by lichen, right? Everything is eating something else alive. Rocks are alive, y'all, if you didn't know. Um, <laughs> they are for real, yo. And a rock, rocks are the most alive. They've been here the longest of any of this material, right? Really, we are on this, you know, everybody says we're living on this rock. We really are. And in our forest, you can really feel it and see it because we live on a, we live in mountainous terrain. It's called a hill, but it's, you know, for all intents and purposes, it could be a mountain. It's mountainous. It has boulders everywhere, glacial boulders everywhere, you know, gorges, you know, uh, uh, the property ramps up. It's, you know, it goes to a, a peak and cliffs at the back, 30 foot exposed rock ledges in the back. You can feel the rock and, and what it's, what it's, what it's, what it's here doing, what it's seen. I mean, imagine the rock watching all of the things around us, the plants grow up and down, the people run around, the insects, and it's just there, slowly changing, slowly moving, slowly crumbling. You can learn everything you need to know about life just by chilling out in the woods, y'all. And that's exactly why I was like, if I can pull a bunch of artists into the woods, into this Miyazaki world, right, it will connect them to nature in a way that will be good and healthy for the universe. And it will make their art richer. It will get them more in touch with, you know, this living organism that we are a part of, not separate from. You know, people feel very separate from nature. We're not at all. It's easy to forget it, but we're not. But so crazy that, you know, just in 2004, 2005, to just have this crazy idea of, I want to get my own forest. I want to start these art events and have all this great stuff happening. Great. I want to raise my kids in the for in our own forest, building forts, building trails, having fun, doing whatever we want to do, following those intuitional 
bells, you know, living that dream life, creating our own reality every day in the way that makes us happy, you know, being able to evolve, being able to change while still being true to that nostalgia, right? The being surrounded by toys, being surrounded by friends, being surrounded by great music, having cookouts endlessly, you know, this whole vision of this life was there in me then and it seemed crazy when I would tell people about it. Nobody really got it, but I did. And that's all that mattered. That's all that I needed, right? And now we're sitting here and it's, you know, 21 years into my career where that was year one, year two. I've accomplished more than I ever could have imagined. We got the homies rolling through. We got the homies staying in the cabins that they helped put together, you know, this this boy, this man, Squatch Matrix, came here when he was, you know, a young man, maybe 20 or whatever, right? Oh, he's 34 now, so what? That's 30. Yeah, so 21, he came here for the first time, right? He's been here back and back and became to, you said, six of the seven training camps. He was at Ghost Fest last year. He's, you know, come to visit other times, stayed uh, on his own before. And, and, and we have so many people like this in the, in the crew. We really have one of the dopest artist crews out there, you know? Um, and it's, 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 it's members, it's members of the Ghost Scouts. It's members of the workshop alumni group. It's, it's, it's Pratt homies. It's, it's local homies here. It's, you know, it's, it's old friends even from high school. Shout out Tyler Price just over here the other day watching some UFC, you know what I'm saying? Friends since high school, did my first illustrations for him, did my first album covers, my first show posters for the homie. I mean, this is the stuff of life. And it's, you know, every, every life is work. You know, some people go, oh my God, this is so much work, so much work. When I hear people that are like, have a nine to five job and they work, they put all this work in for other people that doesn't really accrue anything for them personally, kind of, kind of steals their energy, kind of, uh, you know, they're kind of selling their soul away, selling their life away, selling their time away, right? Your time is your most precious commodity on, in this reality. Selling their time to the highest bidder um, you know, and then, and then afterwards, you know, having conversations about how they're lost and anxious and they, they, you know, they don't even know what their intuition is. They don't even really have a clue of who they are, who they are and what they want to be and what they want to be doing. That to me sounds so exhausting. I mean, you know, when I'm, ex you know, when you have a good, there's two kinds of tired, right? There's the tired of being lazy and you're feeling fat and out of shape and and sore and tired and that's a real bad that's a real bad tired feeling and then there's a good tired feeling where you've just had a workout you've just hiked a mountain with your friends you're coming back you're soaking your feet in the brook you're throwing on a ufc you're firing up the grill you're sore as fuck you're tired as fuck but you feel amazing and you're evolving and you're growing those are two very different kinds of feeling tired and Having the, you know, being a, a, uh, a corporate worker, an industrial worker, you know, that isn't tied to your nostalgia, that isn't tied to your passion is like that one of being the, you're doing all the work, but because you've been mentally lazy and, and it's not for your purpose in life, it's like you're running in a hamster wheel and you're going nowhere and you're stagnant and you're not evolving and you're not growing. Whereas the other one, you know, yes, it's, it's work. It's, I think it's all equal. I think all things are equal. I think you, it's the same amount of work that I put in, but at the end of the day, I am growing. I'm expanding. I'm so fucking hyped. I'm hyped when I wake up. I'm fucking overflowing with energy, overflowing with enthusiasm to the point that people think I have mental problems. You know, like, they're like, dude, this guy, what's this guy on? And I'm, you know, I mean, fucking the natural. Oh, I hear him out there. I hear the squatchies. What's up? I'm just finishing up a little shrimp for breakfast video, guys. Yeah, pop up here real quick. We'll get Squatch to make a little cameo as we wrap up. 
Oh yeah, here he comes, the man himself. As we've been talking about, a perfect timing, the last minute, and here he comes, the man himself, the man, the myth, the legend, Squatch Matrix, Camp Champ Year Two, the first Camp Champion, the inventor of Camp Championess, is making his way up here to say hi for a little shrimp for breakfast, y'all. Here comes the champ, here comes the champ, bum, 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 and he's going to throw out his back on the way up the stairs. He's going to be devastatingly injured by the time he gets up here. Here we are, pop in. Woo! Wow, there he is. Oh, yeah, y'all. Oh, and the kids are coming through. Coming. Here come the kids Watch coming through. Watch out for the cord. Watch out for the cord. Oh, the cord. The cord. The cord. Watch go under. Go under. Oh, my God. The curtain. As we peel back the look curtain. At oh, look, at the, look at the phone and say, Oh, look, here we are. Oh, my God. Special guest appearance. Champ Junior. Squatch say, Junior. Monty, say, caca. 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 And there you have it, y'all. A little shrimp for breakfast, y'all. Woo! Oh, here, oh, here it goes. Squatch Junior Junior. Squatch Junior Junior. Oh my god. Fuzzy, Look say, at this. Say, wow. Caca. Wow. Say oh, caca. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Woo! There you go, y'all. A little shrimp for breakfast.